list. Okay. So I have a forum and everything I'm going to teach you through forum only because I have designed this thing such a way. So let me refresh it. So multiple forums I have designed and we'll go one by one. So all forums, you know that it's in system engineering because there are a lot of commands I have to do carefully because, you know, we don't have a Linux environment. We have a Windows environment. So I have to change the command appropriately because most of the commands everywhere you will find is like a Windows or Linux command. We have mid in between. We have git bash, right? So I have to modify. So I created this three forum for us. This one will do later part of the day. And right now we are working on ham chart. So if you can jump on that, I would be, it would be very helpful. I'm going to add in the chat also. And stop me anytime in, in case if I'm going fast, anything doesn't make sense to you. Uh, please do stop because these are beautiful topic. Trust me, I'm super excited. I spent like almost 20 to 30 hours during this long weekends because it's super. This is super. One time you learn and lifetime you can enjoy, right? So super because I know this thing, but the, in order for me to give you a project, I thought it would be better if I give you step-by-step -step documentation. So I designed this thing. Now, what is Hamchat first of all and why we are learning? So you might notice that that anytime you do uh, Kubernetes, right? When you do Kubernetes, you are going through deployment. And when you do deployment, either you use Kubernetes deployment or you use Terraform, doesn't matter. You do need to create multiple files. And if you remember multiple files perspective, one file you need to do deployment. <laughs> then second time you would do maybe services. Maybe you are doing some kind of configurations. So every time you do deployment, you know, your part, you deploy a part, you go into deployment file, and then you're deploying services because you know that you cannot access part directly. So you need a service. And then if you want to do some configuration, then you need some configuration. Now, if you are de deploying this thing in a dev environment, you need a three files for dev environment. If you're deploying that in a QA, another three files. And if you are doing in production, another three files. And later on, if you have another application to deploy, you will have another three files, another thing. So these files will grow significantly. And then you don't have consistency because you are creating multiple files. Each environment may be three, maybe four files you are doing. Now think about that. You have five environments, like dev environment, QA environment, production environment, security environment. So this file will be multiplied by five. So it means 15 files. If you are making one change, you have to make 15 time change. Oh my God. And not only for one application, you might have hundreds of applications. So now you have files, which is redundant and unnecessary. There got to be a better way to do. So Helm chart comes handy. Helm chart say, wait a minute. You need a file. That's I understand. Kubernetes works deployment file. You need, you need a service YAML, deployment YAML. You need a config YAML. I got it. But this environment you have, can we not use environment as a variable? and make it better. Hmm, that's pretty good. Just like Terraform has a variable, you can use Terraform, you can use Hamchart. There is not big difference. Terraform works great, Hamchart works great. Both are, you can use Terraform with Hamchart also, nothing wrong. So what Hamchart gives you, a nice beautiful thing called template. Template, please understand, template. So they say, if you're deploying application, every deployment file is a template, service file is template and config is a template now no matter what you application you are deploying application one application two application three the template remains same the only thing change is the value value like example application will have a name application one right scale how many scales you want application have a little bit here and there change like ports and mapping and all so for that application specific we create a one file called value file values just like you know, in Terraform you call variable, here they call value. So you have value files. In that value file, you can say environment is dev. Then entire things will be modified according to dev environment. If you say value environment equal to QA. So you don't have to create multiple files. You just create a small specific value, particular thing, and it will drive this template. So Helm chart says, I have a template. So example, I need a template for web application or I need a template for database application or I need a template for web server. 
everyone has a template. You have a ready-made template and you substitute the value through values. There is a file you create of values. And that values during deployment time, please understand during deployment time, Helm chart will use this template and value and deploy and it will inform Kubernetes do this for you. So rather than you write seven, eight command, right? In Kubernetes, kubectl apply deployment, apply service, apply this, apply this. There are so many commands you write. You don't have to write all commands. Just write one command and internal orchestration will be taken care of by Helm chart. So first, deployment becomes simple. Second, we don't have to create a multiple files because you can drive template and that template will remain same for all front-end application. So application to application, you don't have to create 15 files. These files will remain for all applications. So consistency is across the board because if you want to make a change in a template, it applies to all files and it will be more readable because template is template because it's same. You're not normally changing template. You're only changing value. So consistency across the board. The third thing is, is just like a Terraform, maintain the state. Terraform maintains the desired state. Remember, we talk about desired state and then actual state, right? So this Helm chart also can easily, beautiful part, easily, let's say you deploy the application and you want to upgrade it. You don't have to worry about stop, start. You just say upgrade and it will upgrade for you. If you say rollback, it will roll back for you. If you say, uh, I want to apply patch, you can do the patch. So basically, Helm chart becomes your orchestrator. Helm chart internally talk to kubectl or in easy language. If you remember the architecture, it talked to you know, API server, cube API server. It talks through REST service. So Helm chart itself talk to you know, uh, Kubernetes architecture, but you don't have to write all commands. So Helm chart makes deployment life easy. Otherwise, you have to write so many commands. You have to go through so many files and human nature, it make make mistake. So you, uh, if you know Helm chart, deployment will be easy. So you all are DevOps students. DevOps student responsibility is to deploy. Application will be developed by the development team, but then they will hand over. Now you have two choice. Can I use Terraform or can I use Helm chart or can I use both? So Terraform and Helm chart can work to Together, Terraform mainly used for creating infrastructure. Listen carefully. Terraform mainly used for creating infrastructure. So, example, I need a VPN, I need a subnet, I need this thing, I need EC2, I need database. Those creation Terraform is wonderful. But application deployment perspective, Terraform is not good. Terraform is more infrastructure as a code. So you can infrastructure wise, but application deployment wise, help chart is much better because Helm chart is designed for container orchestrations, working with Kubernetes. So it's kind of Kubernetes in easy language. It's a, you know, it's a family of Kubernetes. Or is it an alternative? It's not alternative. It's not a, Helm chart only works with Kubernetes. So Helm chart is designed for Kubernetes. So it's a family, but you don't have to use kubectl command. Now you're going to use Helm chart command to do the same thing what you used to do with kubectl. So far, any questions? So that means you need a Kubernetes install, right? Yeah, but that's okay. the reason we have gone to sequence, right? First we did Docker, right? Yes. Then we started Kubernetes, where we mm -hmm. gone through Kubernetes architecture, and then we did a Kubernetes deployment with kubectl. Then we do yes. Terraform, right? Where we started creating infrastructure. You should have uh, what you call Kubernetes cluster before you deploy. I hope that is prerequisite. Because if you don't have a Kubernetes cluster, then there is nothing you can deploy technically, right? Yes, I did that. I so, did that. Yeah, so we have to have, uh, you know, Windows, sorry, Docker desktop, which we have been using for last couple of weeks, three weeks. Docker desktop, we have Kubernetes. So we enable that. So that bare minimum, you need that. That's our prerequisite, which we have been doing for last two, three weeks. Any other questions? Good. Okay. So first of all, make sure you understand. Whenever they say chart, it's nothing but it's a template they are talking about. And whenever they say package, so package is nothing but it's like everything has a recipe. So example, if you think about pizza, right? So pizza needs a first dog, then you need a topping, 
then you need cheese, then you need this. And then step by step, you are doing this. And then at the end of the day, you get a pizza, right? So package is like that, what file you need. So first you need a deployment file, then you need a service file. And, and then you, this, this all together is called package. So it's all in one package rather than separate files. So they call, you know, package. And chart is nothing but folder, just assume a folder. So when you are deploying applications, so that's application chart. So in that chart, you have this many files as a template and you call as a package. So technically speaking, there is no word called chart as such, but you are actually saying this application, what is the name and what are the little bit attribute about the application you write in a chart file. All file will be in YAML form. So you, I will show you step by step, don't worry, you will understand. So you will have similar file as you had in a Kubernetes, deployment YAML, service YAML, config YAML, deployment YAML, service YAML, and config ML. Deployment ML will help you which image to deploy. Service ML will allow you to access the part because you cannot access part. So remember we discussed about when you deploy, you have node first. In node you have part, in node you have part, and in part you have container. So when you do deployment, deployment will create part for you. Another part you will have container, but you cannot access. So there you need another file called service. So service normally have a load balancer. If you are using node port, then you can, you can access this service through browser and this service will do load balancer among part, which is the second file. And third is the config. Config file means if you want to change some configuration inside the container, you can do that. Like example, if you want to install some file, if you want to copy something, you can do config through. So these three files, you normally need that in order to interact with the part or in order to access from the browser. Now, all those things will package as a one folder, and that is they call chart. So the folder structure will look like this. You will have application name. That's any name you can give. Inside, you always have a template. Implied, you will have template folder. Always, you will have template folder. And inside template folder, you will have three files by default. Now, because it's a template, please understand. Template means not hard coded. Please understand. Template means not hard coded. So, example, if I say Vezi Pizza, it's a hard coded. But if I say it's a pizza template, and Vezi will be added later on. So, template, this one will have a some, what do you call, substitute parameter through curly bracket, like that. So, every file should have a substitute parameter like that. And we will learn that. But this is where you create a template because this file will not change application to application, environment to environment. It will remain same because it's a template. Pizza is pizza. It doesn't matter you make like Vezi pizza or pepperoni pizza. It's a pizza is pizza. Template is same. The only thing topping is changing or customization is changing. So the customizations, you will add another file called values, values.yaml, where you add a customization detail. And that customized details, you have a couple of files. So one is values and one is a, another, another file you add like that detail, that chart. And if you have another file, you can add. Now, if you want to read this file, this dollar, there's a naming convention. So I'll show you. So you can say that and Helm chart will go to a particular file and read the value, just like Terraform was doing. It's a very similar concept. So first, every chart should have three templates. Template number one, deployment. Template number two, service. Template number three, config map. And then it will have additional files to provide the values to the template. Because if I have pizza template, it will not create a Vezi pizza. I need to provide what Vezi topping I need. So that is coming through values. So you need a values file. You also will have a chart. And you may have also another file. You can create a structure. Now, this way you can manage well. So template will remain same, values can change. So far, any question? So far, so good? Now, now in this exercise, in order for us to do that, please understand, you are not going to create environment to environment file. Instead of this one, you will create a one key or environment and then value is, you change the value, dev, QA, like that and you substitute the environment value while you're doing deployment. So we'll talk about that. Now, 
this is the way overall structure will look like. Please pay attention. You, this entire structure, they call chart, helm chart, entire structure. And you can see there is a template folder where you have three files. Almost every application will have three files. If I go to this template file, you will see substituted parameter like this. It means it, it knows that this can be changed. This can be changed. You will see two curly bracket. This is called special language. They use Go lang language substituted parameter. Now this is your customization. This file, through that you customize these files. Now, this one is like label of the application. So like if my application is this thing, then application name, application versions like that. You can specify them. Most of the customization will done through this file. Now, if you are, if you want to deploy this, this package to dev environment, you can use this value. This is generic value, but you can say this is dev, dev specific value. You can write key value, key value, key value. And during deployment time, you give that. It means this package is now prepared for dev environment. Now, let's example, if you want to deploy this to production, then you create a production specific key value and use this file as a value, remove this thing and use this as a value, then this will be deployed as a production. So template remains same, the value change because you are passing that environment specific value. So you are driving the template according to the environment and you are creating these environment specific. So if when you are doing CI CD pipeline, when you create a pipeline, you will have one pipeline for dev, right? I'm hoping you have done Jenkins. When you create a one pipeline for dev, at that time you pass this thing. But when you create another pipeline for QA, you will pass that specific environment file. And when you create another pipeline for production, then you pass that space. So when you are doing that in your project, you can do this way. Good news, template remains same, environment specific, you know exact pipeline for dev. You create this file and substitute here so your package will be that environment specific package and when it deploy it will point to proper dev cluster it will be pointed to production cluster depend on your need and you can put those information in valid or yaml any questions so far good okay so moving along in order for us to do that it used to be we used to be doing this kubernetes so you used to do that in Kubernetes. These are the files you used to do. Now your file structure is changed. You will have template structure and you will have these files which are bold here. And there's, these are substituted files which you can pass. This is the most important file and this is the decoration file. How you decorate your application, right? This is like for this application. And this file is for substitutions. That's pretty much it. So if you understand this, you understand the structure. If you are still having question about template, these are ready-made template. You don't need to create template. Helm chart does have a template, just like a vending machine. So vending machine has template. If you do one, you do this. If you do two, this, just like a coffee. Right? Based on the template, you have appropriate coffee, just like that. So the template is there. So this template, you can say, hey, Helm chart, I need to create a template for database. It will create for you. It will create for you because it knows that. The only thing you need to do is this one and this one. This one is very generic. Even you don't do much, it's fine. You need to do this thing properly. So example, particular port you want to customize, a particular scale you want to do, particular node type, service type, you can do those things in values. So you just need to get master in values.yaml. And good news about it, in that case, you will know what you want. So example, if you want to deploy your application to machine and you want to say three replica, you already know that you need a three replica. Maybe dev environment, you need a one replica. But in production environment, you need a three replica. So in dev file, when you substitute, you can say replica one, but in the production, you say replica three. That's pretty much it. Let's say example, you say, I want to deploy this in a cluster IP. And here I want to do node port. You can do that. Or you can say this one, I want to have name this one, or maybe version, version of my web server 1.1. Here I want 1.2. You can do that easily through value.yaml. Questions so far? Good. So let's move on. Now, there are, this is all information about file I'm trying to explain here. But this is that it contains information about the version name and description, which is kind of simple. Most important file is this and template, which we talk about. 
There are other aspects there, but you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Now, interview question. In one, one application, using, depend on another application, can I refer those templates? Answer is yes. So if you have an application, they call chart. That chart is dependent on another chart. Then you can refer that and that there is a folder called charts. So you can show, you can show dependency. So like example, you have application, just an example, you have three tier application. And let's say your application is dependent on RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ uh, or maybe MQ server, or let's say your application is depend on database. In that case, you have multiple charts. So in database, so you can specify this chart. So chart one, chart two, chart three. So that you create a chart folder and then you show the dependency. When you do this activity, you will understand as you go forward. Good news, all the Helm chart has a ready-made uh, packages. You can download, you can see the chart. You don't need to write a single line in chart unless you customize it. Charts are ready-made, available to you. You just use it. The only thing is you use what you want to substitute to the value, which is your values. So you need to be clear about values and chart. This is most simple file. The most important file is values. Depends on your need, you need to customize. But templates are all ready to use it. So you will see that. Now, see here, I created a small video, very super fast video I created, 10 minutes video just to prepare you about Terraform videos and also watch a video. Now, let's get started we are going to download helm chart okay now there are a lot of confusions and that's why you might have problem in case if you are you know not going through this class so if you are in my forum i'm hoping you are let's click on this link so when you click on link there are a lot of options available you can see there are many options available these are all defined on many many operating system we are going to use Windows one. But most of the tutorial, most of the books, most of the materials are designed for Linux one. And we do not have proper way Linux. And we don't have a way to install and all. You can do part of your project if you want to. But I don't mind. It doesn't matter Windows versus Linux. The only thing you need to make sure when it is a pure Linux command, you use git bash. Git bash. So git bash is the little bit interim, interim solution of Linux command. Now there are problem because git bash is Linux and Windows is Windows. So in Windows, you do this way, path, right? In Linux path is you do this way. So you do forward slash here, here you do backward slash. Here you do C drive, here you do in you know, a dot, means current directory and you do path. So that is, you have to be careful. I try my best to do all labs appropriately. So I have to convert it uh, because Narendra's lab was on Linux and my labs are in Windows. So I had to convert it. Mostly I have done screenshots and also should not have any problem. But in case if you have a problem, we'll figure it out. Good news, it will work. So right now, let's get started. Click on the Windows AMD 64, click on it. And when you click it, start downloading the file. So it will download. It is tiny file, so it should download. And you can see right now it's downloading. So I have Helm version 3.13 download. <laughs> Once you download, you unzip that file. I hope you are following. Don't go too far too behind because if you are behind, I cannot help you further. I'm hoping you are in a, a really, uh, forum. From forum, I click here so you can see this is beautiful. Download. So we click on download link here. So we click and then we are downloading this one, Helm chart. So I put a screenshot also because some of you might have problem which one to download. So you download this Windows. We are downloading. So once you download, you have zip file, which will be most likely in your download folder. So if I go to download folder, I will have Helm here. And if you have that, just unzip that. Unzip that. So right click and unzip. I'm hoping all of you are doing great. And I extract all. And you're done. Ham chart is installed. Was it hard? Installing ham chart is a piece of cake. Do you guys agree? In second or two, you will have ham chart. So I have ham chart directory. 
And if I double click on that, I can see ham.exe. If I double click here, I'll see ham.exe. Give me thumbs up if you are able to go to the directory and you can see ham. Misha is doing good. Matthew is doing good. You need to get acknowledgement. Remember, Perry. We right. have to run the Helm exe. Oh, you're going too fast, my friend. A little okay. slow down. <laughs> we, have, we have to go a little bit slower. Yes, Perry. Good, good. So perfect. Now, please click here and copy this thing. So just click here and copy the path. Copy the path. So just copy, I click here and I do control C. Now start your CMD. Start your CMD. Just type CMD and click on that. So you're here. I also want to start bash. So git bash because it will be helpful. <clears throat> Just try both. So you have both windows open. Now here on a windows, you can see right now command prompt is written. Do CD and space, CD space, right click, and you will get this, press enter and do DIR. So you can see helm.exe. And if yours, then just search help, type help and press enter and it will give you this. It means help means installed successfully. So just type help and you will be able to see that. Good. Now, uh, some smart people do path. So it gives you options. Some smart people do path. If you want to do path, I'm going to do without path because, you know, changing path sometimes people have a hard time. Ideally, you should do path. In case if you do not know how to do path, path is nothing but what you normally do is take this directory, put this directory in a path. So if you did this, put this in a path, then Helm will be accessed from anywhere. So example, if I want to do it, I'll just quickly show you quickly. So I, I can come here and I can look for edit environment, edit environment, just search edit environment edit environment now problem is each window has a different setup so that's the problem that's why i normally don't show that but edit environment so if you do that edit environment edit environment variable system variable and if you click on that you come here you go to environment variable and if you scroll down a little bit there is a path you have to click on the path. So first you do edit environment, click here. Then you scroll down your path and then you click on edit because it's existing path. And then you click on new and paste that whole path. If you put, put that, then you have chart in the path. So you click on new and here you do control V. So ham chart is path. You don't have to do it, but Ideally, this is the way you do put path. Every anything you want to make sure, put it in path so it should work. So right now I do OK. And I do OK. And I do OK. When you create the environment, you need to close your window and start another CMD. Brand new CMD. And if I do help now anywhere, it will work because it is knowing the path. But in case if you do not know how to do, just go to CD, pick the directory path and go straight to that directory and work from that directory only. So this way you have Helm here and Helm is visible here. If you do that, it will work. Let me know if you have any questions so far before we go to the next step. Good. Awesome. Now, let's go further. Again, you don't have to memorize anything. Make sure you understand. Because in interview, no one will ask you write any command. They will ask you how this recipe works. Just like what I'm explaining, I'm drawing it. If you can do that, that's all they are looking for. Because you can always do Google. You can always use our refer, uh, this our you know, forum. But most important thing, concept. What you are doing, why you're doing. Concept has to be clear. So we have done unzip, so we are here. Now for this class, I have created a small, what do you call it? GitHub repo. So we're going to use that. And this we will do through Git 
cloud. So those who have known Git, Git is nothing but storage software version management. We call SVM software version management. I have created the folder and file just like I'm sharing like a PowerPoint through Dropbox. This is a bunch of file I want to share with the Git clone because you know part of your project there is one requirement that you will do webhook. So I thought maybe a little bit you know having Git will be kind of you will see that. So first in case if you want to be curious you click on that and you will see my the structure. So I created that. Uh, the structures I created simple. This is my ID, and I created this project. This is they call chart project folder is a chart, and inside that there is an application name. So this is the application name, and these are environment specific files. So we can create environment specific file. Remember I was saying day QA. This is not ham chart. This is something you do. Now if I go inside, you will see template, and you will see. The most important file. This is where magic starts. So this is a template. This is a chart, and this is the value. Chart has a descriptions about your application, and a value has a different scrum, so value for this template. So let's go to templates. So if you go to templates, Excuse me, how did you get to this? Sorry, I, I was a little yeah. behind. Is it this one? Oh, okay. Okay. You are you are in forum, right? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So you just click on it. And then you will come here. Let me go back here. Just make sure you're in home dip, home home demo. So, so if you come here, you will see a demo and go to chart. Okay. I'm just explaining what we have. So then we'll later on we can do that. Otherwise, you will not really appreciate the Helm chart benefits. So this is three files. These are template files. Why template file? Because it's in part of template folder. This is actually you can create this thing by just writing command called helm right helm create chart if you do that create chart the command so it will create for you this file it will create however i want to give you a ready-made file so i did that so if i just click on one of them so you can see what i'm talking about so you can see here this is beautiful file it is just like our kubernetes file but you can see here, this is the only thing difference. Otherwise, everything is our, what do you call, Kubernetes kubectl file. Kind config. Now it says release dot name. It means when you say dot, it says somewhere there is a file, there is a name called release. And from there we will pick up the name. So this will normally, it will be in a chart file. But if you said dot value, it means there is a file called values. Go to value file. First is the this is release means chart. It will go to chart and it will pick up the name. And the values means it go to value file. Under that, there will be a section called environment. Under that, there is a name. Pick this so it will replace the proper name. I'm going to show you so you will understand. So this is one, one file. Let's go back to template. And now let's click here. So let's go to deployment so you can see another thing. So you can see here everything is there again. When you say dot release, so it means it will pick up from release. And this one is this replicant replica count will read from values.yaml. So there is only two files it will refer. Release will come from chart file, chart.yaml, and this one will come from value.yaml. So if you want to use another file, you can just use the proper naming convention and then name it. So you can have like a you know structure within structures, so like example, this is structure within structure and then structure then you do dot notation so check it out values dot image dot repository it means the structure is there is a structure called image and inside that there is a thing called repository here the value means this is the file this is the structure structure has a substructure and then you have a substructure so you can get the key so let's take an example so you will understand so right now i want to understand this too how this release name comes and how the replica count comes. I know this is coming from values file and I know this is coming from charts. But this is beautiful, same thing as we, we were hard coding. In case if you remember Kubernetes, we were hard coding here, replica three, we were writing three, but that's a hard coded. Environment to environment, if you wanna change, you can do when you can hard code the number three. 
Same thing for other aspect, image. Like you are hard coding what specific image you want. Now we are making a template type. So whenever we say template type, we are giving ability to substitute it. Now that part is clear. So let's go here and say, is there anywhere replica count is there? So I'm going to come out from uh, ng chart and I'll go for values. And you will see there, there is a concept called rep replica count. So you can see there is a replica count right away. And if you see here, image is structure and tag is there. So it is reading file name values, then structure image inside that key tag and get the value. Values is the file, image repository. So you get, it reads all those things from them. Even environment, it reads from there. And if you don't have anything, it directly read replica count, which is values dot values dot replica count. And same apply for charts. So in chart, you can see here the release name. So here, you, anything you are doing release, you're passing that information. Anything you want from here, you can get that information. So now, let's say example, we go one more time. So you're, you're here. Team India, pick up already. Let me turn off the, because they will keep typing and it will be recorded. I don't want recorded part. Okay. Now, let's go one more time. So let's say if I go to deployment, let's pick one thing. This is values image pool policy. So where this file will be, this detail will be, which file? Value file. Value. And there will be a structure called image and there will be a key called pool policy, right? So let's can we can mm -hmm. we define like multiple images? Ideally, no, right? Because you are deploying the container, right? Each container, one image. So remember, like in a cloud formation, we have mm -hmm. option, right? Mm -hmm. To pick one from multiple files, like multiple values. I mean, so you I know what I'm talking about, right? No, this is a container. I think you're you are asking one container have multiple image. If they, you want to do that, that's called, uh -huh. yes, you can do that. Yeah. You can that's do what that. I'm asking. Yeah. But that in that case you have to have a strategy right in your when you're creating a what you call docker file right you can say lin, linux image and then you can say just an example you can say i want to have radish and then on top of that you want to you can do that but that consider still consider as a one image right that image is consists with multiple images makes okay. sense because that's called composite basically composite image uh, you sh you can, but in production, I would not advise because then it won't scale independently, right? Yeah, uh, just for curiosity. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You can do that. That's called composite. Uh, can I have one image? Can I have multiple image answers? Yes, you can do that. Now, oh, so you're talking about the Docker Compose? Yes. Okay. So Got it's it. yeah, it's just like a multiple image together. Yeah. So compose. Right? Ideally, when you do Kubernetes, you will do one image uh, because you can one container one image so you can scale independently and you can deploy independently if you are multiple it becomes monolithic it becomes bulky then the deployment time start stop release time upgrade time it's going to take a little extra time which sometimes may be a concern so that way you can separate it out okay now let's verify that so this one is a value image full policy so as we all mentioned i'm going to values and i can see here full policy so here value image full policy is there perfect so i think we got idea now we have templates we got it we are charged we got these are the only thing you need so if you are starting brand new project and you don't want to do copy paste right let's say you don't want to copy paste this file in that case you just write a ham chamar like let me show you this command so Let's say you want to do brand new. In that case, yeah, you you just run a command. You get chart. Basically, the command I said I put somewhere I written. Command create chart. I think somewhere I wrote. I'm not sure where I wrote. So you can, yeah. If you want, you can create the chart command through create hum chart here. Here is the command. So if you say that. It will create for you template. But the problem is if it creates that, if the key value is not proper matching, then I need to educate you all the substitute and it may take a time for troubleshooting and all. So I created it for you. So this is what I exactly did. I created, I run the command, 
And using when I create a command, it create this structure for me. It create this structure for me. Make sense? And then I kind of substituted a value based on what I need. I did that part. But you can create entire start from zero. You can do that. But because we have limited time and we don't want to do all those things like what you call boilerplate thing, we know that how it works. And good news about this is the template, so it knows how to create this template. The only thing you need to change this file, right? And this file, chat file, sorry. This rest of the things are template. So in my case, if you scroll up a little bit, my case, what I have done, I have the repository. What we are going to do, we're going to say, hey, git, go to this and download it. So it will download in your local machine. So you right now, just copy this command like this, control C and go to your Windows desktop, like this, where you have a command prompt, command prompt, and right click and paste. What it is going to do, the git command will make a call to my repo. Using my repo, it will download this folder structure. It's going to download the folder structure. Now you press enter. And when you press enter, it's going to create an entire project structure, which is in my case will be help demo. So if you do DIR, you will see Helm demo. Give me a thumbs up if you are able to get that. This creates the folder Helm demo. I try not to do too much typing because you know if I do typing too much and if you make a mistake, you entire exercise you will not be able to do. This requires quite a good series of commands. Good. So now we have, so now we want to go inside the folder. So let's go to, so we'll say CD and we'll say Helm demo. So we are inside the folder. So if you do DIR, you will see that now you have, you have, if I do DIR, oops, what happened with this? I thought I went to help chat. Some reason it didn't go right. Helm demo. Yeah, now it went. Yeah. Okay. Some reason it didn't go there. CD help demo. So this is the directory. This directory. I'm going inside the directory. I did DIR. Now when I do DIR, you can see there is an environment file where I can have different different environment specific values. This is the application. Inside application, I have template. And inside template, there's a folder called template. And I have three files, services, deployment, and config. And then I have chart file, and I have a value file. So everything I have here. In case, if you want to see that, the best way to go to is go to inside CD, NG, and just type and then press tab. NG, I, tab, NG, I, tab. So it will write for you and do DIR. So you can see here, your template as a folder and chart. In case if you still have a problem, just to DIR templates, just type temp into tab. So you can see there are three files, right? And values are here. In case if you want to see value, just to type values.yamo. So you can see these are a value. Right now we are using you know port type cluster IP. If you want to expose, you can do node port, right? Target port is 9000 environments all those things you can change if you want to now if you want to do type chart so chart yaml so this is your chart here so this is your chart here remember i'm in ng chart any questions so far whatever we saw in a github we are able to see in local now let come out so we'll say cd dot dot and then cd dot dot cd space dot dot and you are here make sure wherever you are ham ex is visible because some of you might not have path set up properly so it's always a good idea that you are always wherever you are your ham dot ex is accessible because if it is not it won't work if you set up path it will work from any directory but i'm hoping in case if you have not set up i want to be safety net or always want to be there where ham chart is there at this moment, if I do DIR, I can see the helm. And in case if I type, I should not have error. Helm command will work. And if that works, we are on a perfect location. It means we have project in place. 
and we have commands working very well. Now we are going to now do deployment. In order for us to deploy, we want to make sure first we have we have both working. So in my in my Docker desktop, you have you can see my Docker is working and my Kubernetes is working. If you don't have working, you may want to click on uh, you may you want to go and check it out that why what is what is the problem in case if you have still have a problem check the gear icon and see that kubernetes is enabled or not so click on that and make sure you go to kubernetes which i think you most likely will enable because we have worked quite a while so you might have enabled so make sure you have that and once you enable ideally you see at the bottom docker is on and kubernetes on that has to be on. If it is not, it will, you will get an error. Give me thumbs up if you have both enabled. Good. Nice. So this part is wonderful. Uh, good news about I love Windows uh, Docker desktop, but there is another tool people use, Minikube. In case if you want to play around, you can do that also. But I like this one because I'm a Windows guy, so I use that. But Minikube work almost same. Now we are in this location. All those commands, I have taken screenshots, so error chances will be kind of less if you pay attention. Exact same command I have done, and you can kind of see that. Sometimes human make mistakes, but if you see the picture, it's easy. Now we are we are not going to create from scratch, so we're going to skip this part and we'll come to here. Now we already discussed about that values will be substituted from well filed this is the template each template will be substituted and how does it work so there are a series of steps go through that we discuss about so i'm going to skip that part now i'm now going to go to next one which is the deployment aspect so first thing we need to validate that my chart files are proper or not so for that helm has a command called linked and then i'm giving a dot which is nothing but current directory and then my folder and then my project. So help lint and it will look for that and look for the chart file. So it say, hey, there is one chart file found and there is zero error. If you get an error, you have to stop, you fix that. So it's very important. Why am I doing dot? Because wherever I am right now, help, help, me, help command is available, but there is a folder called helm demo. Inside that folder, there is a folder called ngx chart. Inside that chart, there is a chart.yaml. So that's why I'm giving appropriate path to go to that location. Wherever the chart.yaml is there, I have to go all the way. So that's the command. So right now, let's copy this thing, Control C, and go to your Windows desktop and right click and paste. And it should give me the same result as I have in my screen. You have one chart and it's successfully validated. So you can see is validated. It's chart. There is no error. It means this is the starting point. Let's say if I accidentally make a mistake, just an example, I don't give a proper path, it will say chart not found. Look at that. And it will give an error. It means it gives error. So this is another way to see that you have a problem. But if I use this command, success. If I remove something and it doesn't find the chart.yaml, you will get an error. Any questions so far? So at this moment, I'm using command correctly and it's working fine. Now we are going to the next level. We want to see, please pay attention. We want to see that we have template. These templates are curly brackets. And we also know that there is a values file is there. So we want to see that when I use this values here, how the template will look like. So command is very simple. Huh? template and then we're going to run this command so when you run this command what will happen please pay attention it will display each file one by one and it will also substitute the value so you can see there is no curly bracket anymore because it is using the value from the respective values.yaml or release so you can see on the screen that it substitute happen or not if it is not happen you will see curly bracket and when you see curly bracket, it means you have typo or mismatch of the key value. 
so you can fix it quickly. So this is another way to validate the template and values naming conventions are proper or not. So now let's do it. Again, I'm hoping you are in my forum. So copy that control C and go and paste it here and press enter. So you can see nicely, beautiful. There is no curly bracket. Everything is replaced. Any questions so far? Give me thumbs up if you are able to cruise properly. Good. You can see that everywhere the values are replaced replace appropriately. There is no curly bracket. If there is a curly bracket, I need to check values. I need to make sure the key structures are proper, the references are proper. Just debugging purpose. This is wonderful. Now, moving along. So now we have validated the chart file is there. We know template is also being replaced properly. It's still not deployed yet. So we're going to do dry run. So this command dry run, it's a beautiful command, which will give a signal to Kubernetes. If there is a Kubernetes cluster is not running, you will get an error that, hey, cluster is not there. Otherwise, it will say that it can be deployed without any problem. And it will tell you, what is going to happen again dry run does not deploy it just makes sure that it's deployable is there any error it can you can find it so the command is pretty simple you can say help install dash dash dry run and this is your release name so you are giving release name and you are saying i have this is my folder and this is my application under this application everything is there so you are asking deploy and give name my release so when it deploy it will give a release name as a my release. This is not deploying, it's just checking that is there any error? So can help talks to uh, your Kubernetes cluster. That's what it is. If it doesn't talk, you will get an error. So right now I copy this and I paste it here and I paste it and press enter and ta -da! it did work. When I see the result, it means it did talk to properly. But if I have Kubernetes stop, I will not get this thing. It means I will have error. So it's see, it's beautifully say last deploy this thing, provision is this, status pending to install, it not yet deploy, but it creates nice, beautiful manifest and all. Right? So at this moment, I'm almost ready. Everything looking perfect. So now I'm gonna deploy. So when I deploy, please pay attention. The command is very simple. You can say install, and now you're giving install name. What name? Of your application so this here you're giving all the infrastructures this is all like commands files and configurations but now you're deploying these will be your application name so you're deploying this is the name front end can i change the name yeah you can there you can give any name you want so right now we are keeping front end i copy this and i'm going to paste it in as soon as i do that is now gonna helm will call to kubernetes api server and say hey i want to deploy this application, these are the configuration file. Deploy, a deploy YAML is there. There's a service YAML, there's a configure. Please deploy. So I right click here and this command will read this folder, this project, and under that it will read chart and it will read template and all it will read and it will deploy as a front end application. And it may not take more than less than 10 seconds because you already have verified dry run. So success deployed successfully. If you are able to do that, I would say congratulations. You just deploy the first application to your Kubernetes. Any questions so far? Right? See, my role is to make it easy for you. Right? What I just did is 20 plus hours exercise in front of you. Because step by step, it works, it just works, right? The my role is to cut the all necessary, unnecessary activity. So you get a chart. Now let's say if you want to deploy another application, you just create a new project. You give a new name. Process is exactly the same. So once you install, I want to really check through kubectl. Really deploy is really what happened, right? I want to know about it. So they give a command first, helm list. So you can do helm list. So you can see which application you just deploy. So you can see right now, we deploy this application. So Helm list, Helm list gives me this, the applications which I de deploy, which is front end application. You can see right now, and that is just deploy this version, app version, and we deploy. Right, that's the application we deploy. Now, Helm is that I want to see from kubectl perspective, does this know? So we can do that. So let's run that. So we can say kubectl. 
cube cuddle right control cube cuddle and then you can say get let's say example you say part right so here, here you can say parts so you can see your part will also there so there is a part matching properly because that is the front end which is there perfect now let's say you want to say if you want to let's say get you know services so you can see there is a services very good plus an ip because that is what we specify if i specify node ip it will come here okay so you can see all the command if you, you can say config map config map you can see that and you will see that detail also so basically you can run all this command and you will see that because this command which you just did right it gives all informations you deploy the application all commands will give you result because the application is deployed now if you say you know what i want to do some upgrade because the application is deployed and you want to do upgrade the only thing you need to do is go and change the value and you can upgrade so right now please understand right now if i say part get part front end applications right now it's a zero to one it's trying to do zero to one right why it's one it means my values dot yum value dot yum will have somewhere replica one so if i do two will it do two that's what we want to do or if i want to change the version let's say something i can change it. so right now if i go back to my folder structure which is here helm dem i mean explorer remember download we have done unzip if i double click it will be easier that we can see from here than look around everywhere so i'm in a there and this is the value.yum so please understand wherever we have unzip helm wherever we unzip helm there is a you know clone when we did clone we get a folder and inside folder we have project and there we have value so i want to open this file and see what they have so if i right click and open in notepad or edit plus plus whichever you like or open notepad i have notepad so i'm going to open notepad and i'll see what they have so right now replica replica count is one so let's say if i do replica count two right i save this thing so i basically make a change two so i'm doing replica count two now the original when i deploy that time it was one so zero to one so it's doing that good so now if i want to upgrade it will it take this replica now too i'm not changing anything i'm asking hey can you upgrade for me and when it upgrade it will look for necessary thing and it will pick it up from there so right now let's go to upgrade command so you can see here very simple help upgrade this thing and then start and inside that value has changed so right now i'm going to copy this if my theory is right it should do two here so if i right click here oops sorry because we have changed the value dot replica because we did change the value dot yaml well replica count is two now make sure you save it so now if i paste this thing it should upgrade quickly and then if i do parts it should give me zero to two so if i press enter so it's a no absolute oh, oh yeah another <laughs> what's the problem does anyone know what's the issue anyone my mistake i did not correctly type command correctly but when i do upgrade why am i getting this error if you read this thing it gives you clue you didn't you didn't give the path full path absolutely so what i'll do is i have to go up arrow up arrow up arrow up arrow and i'll keep this thing and i'll just change this thing makes sense because i need to give a folder like that so you can see here so i'll remove this thing so I cannot use directly like that. I have to give a proper path like that. So make sure you do that. That's my mistake. So Helm upgrade this application, which is located in this folder and this project. So last time when I gave the command directly, it did not like it because this folder, this project, it did not find it. Just find this folder first. So I have to give a proper relative path. And if I do that, it will upgrade instantly. So you can see right now it upgraded and it does say that revision two right it did say revision two now let me see if our cube cuddle get part and right now it is going through and you can see right now do you guys agree it did two 
Give me thumbs up if you are able to do it. Are you guys able to? Yes. Can you paste that command helm upgrade in the in the chat such that we don't have to type it? I can. Nothing wrong in that. Yeah. I, I mean the path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One second. Then you can see the get get parts. So you can see now I can change anything in the value and I just need to do upgrade and I can upgrade. And you see how beautiful it is. It does take care. So Helm chart makes my life easy for deployment. People love it. And because it gives you template digestions, please understand. You can customize so much thing in template. You can customize CPU, memory, instance type. You can do a lot of, you can also do a lot of customization. The only thing is, whatever you want to customize, make sure your template, right? And, and then provide that thing in a value.file. That's pretty much it. So you are just feeding that template is like really good. You have all kinds of flexibility and then to values. And you can use this value file environment specific you don't have to create template 15 percent 15 times you just create one uh, environment specific values and and make the whole deployment quickly so people love it terraform also like helm chart kubernetes loves helm chart because you don't write hundreds of commands and you don't want to create a, a file so technically speaking those who are using kubernetes cluster they normally use helm chart that's why people ask in interview do you know helm chart because it's kind of or speed up your deployment thing. A development time also speed up and everything is so easy afterwards because once you have template, once you have values, you know exactly which value you do. Because if you do this what you call Kubernetes basic thing, then everything is hidden in a file. But here values are separate. So you can compare environment to environment if you can do that. Any other questions? Good. We are doing super duper so far. So let's continue further. So we have done that and you can also do two to one and it will work that you can change anything. Now, here I did right. Oh, it was there. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see it. <laughs> so here I have right. Now you can also roll back. And this is beautiful part, roll back. So if you want to roll back, like example, please understand roll back means what happened right now. The version is two because I upgraded it. So you can roll back and it will go back to the previous version or you can say roll back specific version. You can do that also. Roll back is not a undo. Please understand. Install, please understand. Install and upgrade. There's a difference. Install will create a version first. So that will be version 1.0. Upgrade will create a version 2.0. If you do again, it will create a version 3.0. If you again do upgrade 4.0. So when you say rollback, it means from here, it will go to here. But it will not un uninstall. It will go back to the version, previous version. But so all the you, version files will be there, right? It, it is maintained like as a manifest. Yes, okay. answer is yes. It is maintained as a manifest file just to allow you to roll back. But if you want to remove everything then there is a concept called uninstall i'll show you that also so right now i'm going to do this command roll back please understand we have 2.0 in my case right when i deploy it was revision 2.0 so i'm going to paste it now oops i'm going to roll back this thing you can also say roll back to one you can do that or a particular rollback, you can do that. So this one rollback particular version. So right now, I'm saying rollback. So right now, what happened? Two version we had. Now you can see here it's a rollback was successful. So right now, if I go and check, this will be a revision version one because it rolled back. So it, it went to the previous one. But it's still if I do part here, uh, get part. So you can see here now part back is one only because the previous one had only replica one and then the the upgrade created two replica but then when i roll back the previous one has only one so it automatically adjusted that pretty cool huh 
So you don't have to worry about uninstall and all. It will maintain that, oh, you had a previous version, oh, only one replica. Now you have two replicas. So you can, it does maintain automatically. So when you say rollback, it will also go back to the previous state before we made upgrade. Good. Now, now let's do un uninstall. So we, uh, we have done, if you want to do, yeah, this is very important for, if you want to, let's say, um, what do you call it? Deploy, just an example, you have, you have tested everything and now you want to deploy a particular environment. Now we everything we have in one machine, right? But let's say if you want to deploy in a different environment, you can just substitute it value. You can provide the value which is in environments. So you can go back and you can change that environment specific file, and you can say, "Hey, I'm install. My application name will be this. My chart is here, and take this value rather than the default value. So default right now the value is values dot yaml, but I want to use this one." So your environment specific deployment you are doing. So if you do that, it will, but it will cry right now because we are using same environment. So it says, hey, you already have an application, you cannot deploy. So what we need to do is we need to uninstall the application and then we need to deploy. Otherwise it will cry. So let's try without changing anything. So I'm going to copy this and I paste, it will cry. Hey, you already have application deployed. It's not going to work like that. So let me copy this. Right click, copy, and if I do, it will say, hey, you already have application, it's gonna cry. See, cannot reuse the same name. So the only, because we are using same machine, right? We already deploy. So we have two choice. We have to uninstall or give a different name. So right now we're gonna uninstall. So there is a command here. Use this command, ham uninstall. So I use, sorry. copy and install so once i uninstall then i i use up arrow and then press enter so now it is deploying based on the prod environment and you can see now it deploys a version one so i can so this way when you are doing jenkins you can pass environment specific because your pipeline has knowledge about dev so you can pass dev value and you can see template remains same the value will change based on environment. So you can really customize based on the environment. You just substitute the value, which environment specific in class. Good so far? Nice. And then you can also compare if you have version, multiple version available. So if I do upgrade, let's do upgrade. So the previous one upgrade, if we have, so I'll do upgrade this one just for knowledge purpose. I'm going to upgrade this. So this will create a second version. So for some reason, I might copy paste properly. Let me copy this thing one more time. And then, so now I'm going to upgrade. So there is a two version. Now it will be two versions. So I can see version one and now version two. And I want to see what's the difference between these two versions. So there is a command which is called diff. So you can see here, I'm saying this thing, version two. So I'm gonna copy this. Oops, some reason to copy it. And, and then we press enter. So it's a unknown uh, command diff. Same thing. One second, unknown command diff. Or have the remove second because there is a three point I use three point version and this is three point eleven did they have uh, Put the client version information and stuff the status show chart search rollback repo registry push pull plugin package. Don't have that command anymore. Yep. Yeah, there was a beautiful command, so it unfortunately that I cannot show you. Uh I think that works on three point version. I have 13 here. So didn't work, but 3.0, that command was there. 
and there is a limitations. So you can see right now we're going to whole cycle. There are some limitations. Is just you need to be custom with this new learning how to do that, and some little bit extra piece of code you need to understand. But overall, you don't have to write a lot of programs and all, and you can do help chat. Any question, concerns, doubt? Right now, there are some homework related questions I added here. And I found very interesting lab from IBM. So I added the lab for IBM. Uh, again, I want you to do the homework. Again, I always tell people that I'm providing training, but you are going for career. So if I spend for training only many, many hours just to prepare a forum and all, right? You are doing career. Ideally, you should, you should spend more and more hours for your career. But if you are putting less hours, then this is a beautiful thing. Trust me, just in case if you still don't understand, search here. Like example, DevOps, right? DevOps, uh, help chart, help chart, jobs. You every jobs nowadays they're asking. Every jobs they're asking, help chart and Terraform. So it's very, very important that you know about it. Otherwise you will come back and say, yeah, hey, you can training, I don't know. And what you are doing right now, there is nothing special in that. All are systematical command. And you are going to first time, it will take time. Let me repeat. See, first time creating forum take time. But next time teaching doesn't take time. Same thing. First time when you do this exercise will take time. But then it's just the same process. So there is a small lab. Is there step-by-step -step lab? I, I think you may like it. You click on it. This is the IBM lab I found. So they have small application. Right? You follow the flow. The only thing you need to worry about it is the they are using dollar form, which is nothing but git bash. So if I want to do this exercise, I can, I can copy this command and I can write in a, my bash. I can write my bash and it will work. Most of the things will work. There are areas where it may not work, but in that case you have to, you have to do. So here you can see that you are doing create. These are all command you are doing. You see the, how many commands you are doing? All those commands will disappear if you do help. So as you go further, all those things, it, step by step, it, nice exercise, you, you will like it. But if you do this help chart, you can, you can remove all those things and instantly you can create that just like what we did and you can do through him also. So I would suggest do this thing. It does have you know, information step by step and you can continue. It's not going to take long time, but follow the flow. Make sense? So that's my first part of this today's training. Any question, no question. concern? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. The this Helm alternative customers. Why we are not using that? Well, uh, Helm because yeah. it says uh, don't need. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. The forum says mm -hmm. it does not need any download, mm -hmm. right? No, the so, problem is the problem in the market, right? The Helm has all recipe ready. Recipe ready. Now, customization worth is worth exploring, but still, market perspective, Helm has a higher priority, means popularity, my mistake. This compared to others, it's, you know, very simple. Now, this is alternatives there, but if you ask me, no one used this thing, technically in production. Everyone uses this because this is one of the first documentation is great and see how it works. Many of you are first time doing it works just works right we didn't do much installation technical download and boom it works so it is well tested it's properly designed and it is designed for kubernetes now i'm not against with this thing but there are always a choice right you can i use cube cutter answer is yes if you are using let's say elastic um, what do you call kubernetes in that case you might be using another command and that's that can simplify that but help allows you more customization, deeper customization, which I don't think anyone can come and closer to the Helm chart. Because the customization, the detailed customizations you get in Helm, trust me, I don't think any any tool can provide that customization. So you get each and like both.